All right. Um, this is a little merkin pattern that you know it's it's a, a crab with some blue hue to it and red highlights. And somebody commented that it's a patriotic merkin, so we just uh, called it the merkin merkin. And uh, so we'll tie it. It's got some unique techniques here because instead of using like a, a poly yarn or EP fibers, we're going to use our new product called Salty Snack Dubbing to make the body. And I'll, and, and I'll show you how we'll put that together. Before we put any weight on uh, some barbell eyes, um, it's, it's important to know before you go out there um, how to weight your flies. I mean, you can use. Uh, barbell brass barbell eyes those are quite a bit heavier than just uh, something like bead chain eyes and then bead chain eyes come in all different sizes as as do the brass ones and if you're fishing a place where you really need it to sink fast uh, you could use tungsten as well but uh, I'm just going to use some bead chain eyes here um, and this is the large size in the vise I've got uh, Daiichi 2546 size 2 so I'll just figure eight that now a lot of times with bead chain eyes if you see see right here on the bottom that little piece of uh, chain link is poking out and that drives me nuts so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it on its side add a little bit of thin flow put some in there and zap it and that will take care of that problem do it on both sides so when I first was playing with this pattern I was I was using Arctic Fox uh, for the the claws and I s separated them all out it looked really good but then I, I did it with some bruiser blend and it, it looked even better so I'm using bruiser blend junior in the tan color for the claws on this one. So I've got the dubbing all stacked up. I'm going to pinch it down and roll it. And you can see if I grab it in the middle it really tapers down nice. I'm going to find the middle point of this clump and I'm going to figure eight it in right here. So we've got the start of some claws. At this point I'm going to add a, a few highlights. So I'm going to come out here closer to the end and just kind of tag it with a, like a deep blue marker. So I'm going to add some blue and then a little bit of red. Now to get these to stay right where I want them, I'm going to take this loon flow pinch this and, and roll it a little bit and put that right on the red what we have found is the flow will make the red run a little bit well that's just fine for this pattern so there we go we've got it stuck together and now because it you know you have quite a bit of a tip here I'm just going to kind of come in here and trim that down a little bit and now I'm going to take some sky blue bruiser blend and you know this is I think is this is the first time on video that we've actually used bruiser blend dubbing as like a traditional dubbing where you dub it on the thread but it works great for that as well so I've got some of that dubbed on and I'm just going to come in here make a figure eight and then pull the claws together a bit and wrap that bruiser blend up to kind of cock those out at the right angle that you want now we're gonna add some eyes to it we're gonna use black this is epoxy mono crab eyes okay now I'm gonna tie these eyes in when you tie the eye in you want them to kind of angle up like this but I'm going to do that with with the fly essentially upside down. So I've got eyes tied on either side of the hook. 
Okay, at this point I'm going to take some root beer palmer chenille. Just tie in some, some of that. Okay, now we're ready to do our merkin body. Now, one of the things you want to do is make sure you've got a really nice flat and thin base of thread. And that's why I chose to do this with this UTC 140. Because if you unwind this and spin it, it, it goes essentially just perfectly flat. Alright, so now we've got a really nice clean base to put our Merkin body down. A um, bunch of different techniques I've seen with this and uh, one of the things that I've realized is this little uh, hair clip makes this fly ten times easier to tie and ten times less frustrating. So you can use yarn for this and we'll, we'll do some patterns later on that, that use EP fibers and things like that but I wanted to show you this uh, this salty snack dubbing that we we've come out with it's a 100% synthetic fiber it's really translucent similar to other uh, salt water dubbings out there but this one has uh, just the right amount of flash in it All right, this particular one's called crab tan and you see it's it's about three quarters of an inch in length so I can kind of stack those fibers up just like this and when you when you make clumps of it to tie it in for the Merkin body you really don't need a ton of dubbing so I'm going to take this piece and just figure eight it on top of the hook shank and the key here is to use really loose wraps first so those are really loose wraps I can move that all around now I'm going to take those fibers pull them back and I'm going to wrap over the top of those loose wraps and it will snug it right down so now that's that's pretty tight and in place. Now this is where it gets tricky when you tie in the next clump when you figure eight. Typically your thread gets into this clump right here. So that's where our fancy hair clip comes into play. You just clip that on there. Now all of a sudden those fibers are out of the way. Okay, next clump goes in. Two or three loose wraps. you can see how there's a little bit of space between those two I can actually adjust that and pull it right back up against the back one as well sorry my fingers are really in the way here but you get the gist of it so now you can see those are clumped pretty tight together now if you're gonna put rubber legs on your Merkin pattern that can also be very very frustrating so I've seen techniques where you wait till the fly is completely done then you take the rubber and you tie it in a knot um, we're just gonna do it right now take my thread advance it forward just take your your rubber leg tie it in a knot then a double knot really tight and then put them back in the clip so we're just going to repeat this process all the way up to the eyes okay so I've done let's see how many clumps are in there one two three four five clumps of uh, salty snack dubbing and three sets of legs so six total legs so now the idea is I'm going to I'm going to trim the crab shape or the crab body to shape and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take these legs and have them hang down by attaching some hackle pliers to them or gator grips
Okay, and now because this is all dubbing, it'll look best if I kind of brush it out at a 90 degree angle from the hook chain. So there we go. All nice and brushed out, ready to trim. So now I'm going to kind of show you where I'm going to go with my trims, and then, but I have to rotate it back uh, like this to actually make the trim. So I'm going to come in here, and the, a good guide is if you lay your scissors on the eye of the hook so that they're touching the eye, that's a good angle to make your first cut, just like this. So that's what I'm going to do, and then I'll kind of come around and make the crab shape. It's easier to make it too big at first and then trim it down. Okay, now I'm just going to come in here and make sure that I'm even on both sides and kind of trim it. I've seen the methods where people pull it straight up and then kind of trim them both at the same time, but I always get weird angles on the edge of my fly, so I just do them separately. Okay, so there's my trimmed body. Doesn't need to be perfect, but pretty close to it, or the fish won't eat it. No, just kidding. Okay. So, now I'm going to release the legs. I'm going to turn the fly upside down, just to kind of finish it up. Okay, I'm going to kind of pull these legs down. so that I can get the the body up above the, the leg so I can add some highlights. So I'm just going to come in here, put a little tiny bit of blue in it, add some brown. Before we start pulling on these legs anymore, I'm going to go down the middle of the body with some flow. That way those rubber legs that we just tied in there with overhand knots will get locked down into place. Okay, now here's a really cool method for coloring legs. I'm going to get my brown marker and my red marker ready, both in the same hand. And I'm going to take the legs and pull them straight down and come in here and as I move the marker back and forth it rolls these round rubber legs so I'm coloring both sides of them. So once I have about four or five brown marks I'm going to release them and see how far out of the body they're coming and they're just barely starting to come out of the body so I'm going to do probably two more and then a big red one. You can see how much thicker that red one is. And the cool thing is if you stretch the rubber down as you start coloring these these legs when you release the rubber it goes back to its normal shape and it really uh, saturates that the legs with marker. So now I'm going to come in and trim the legs. I want to trim them right around the same size so I'm going to pull them down but I'm not going to stretch them cut them all about that length. Now one of them got loose on me. I'll go through and adjust. Now these will curl up a bit right when they're just right after you color them. See how they're kind of curling? Um, over time they'll straighten back out. So don't worry about that. Alright my thread's still hanging on here. The last thing we're going to do is tie on a weed guard. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that monofilament loop it around my fly and just pull it into place. And If it's bending too far back you can come behind those and add some thread wraps there as well. And to finish off the fly you add just a little bit of flow right around the head. Now obviously this coloration is you know for, for your crabs that have a little bit of blue highlights to them. 
Uh, but this is also a really good pattern in more olive and, and darker brown colors as well. Um, the last step for this is to trim your monofilament. So you want to make sure that it's it's going to guard protect your hook. So cut them a little bit longer. Right about there is good. There you have it.